Hello everyone and welcome to uh, this talk. My name is Fredrik Ekre and uh, in this talk I will describe uh, a little bit about <coughs> how uh, Julia's display system works. Um, and uh, the slides are available at this URL so if you want to check them out later you can go there. So first I want to start with a little bit of an introduction. So uh, the reason that I got started uh, or interested in this part of, of the language is that I worked uh, with Documenter. Uh, and for you, you that don't know, Documenter is uh, one of the packages wh where you can write documentation in Julia. And one of the things that Documenter can do is to evaluate Julia code and to capture the output uh, and show the result. So therefore I, I, I looked into this and uh, I wanted to share uh, what I learned from this. So first, the, the Julia display system is powerful, but I would say that it's quite complicated. Uh, and one of the reasons that uh, it's complicated or maybe confusing at first is that there's a lot of functions uh, that are involved in producing output. So <clears throat> some of, of the functions that you might have uh, scene or is display and show, print and write. Um, and the system support uh, supports many different output formats or representations. So you can output, for example, text and images and uh, HTML and so on. Um, and it's also, of course, possible to implement uh, pretty printing for your own custom types. So since uh, in Julia, it's quite common that you implement your own types. It might also be interesting to uh, implement some display cap capabilities to, to make your objects look nicer. So the agenda for this talk, uh, I will start by giving a rough overview of the general structure and uh, the functions that are involved in producing output. Uh, and then I will uh, mainly look at some examples. So first, how to extend the system for, for a user-defined type, and then show an example of how, we, how the, the complete system is being used in the wild. <coughs> so I want to start by uh, looking at what happens in the Julia REPL, so from, from object to output. So if we have uh, performed the computation and we have the result a result saved in the variable x, for example, then the following happens. So first, the REPL calls display of, of the object, and the display function selects uh, a suitable display, as it's called, from an internal stack. So in, in the REPL, the, the top uh, display is just the REPL itself. Uh, and this display uh, selects something called a MIME format, which is uh, a representation of the object, uh, which the display itself supports. So for example, the REPL only supports text output. And then the last function in the chain is generally show. Um, and the show function is uh, usually the one that produces the output and writes, it, writes the output to an IO buffer. Um, so in this case, we, we would <coughs> produce uh, output of x for the given mime. So in the REPL, this would usually be text output. So I just want to mention what mime means, because you will probably hear it a lot in this talk. Uh, and mime stands for multi-purpose internet mail extensions. Uh, so as you can see from the name, it was uh, originally used for email, but it's essentially a system to describe uh, the representation of an object. Uh, so for example, then in email and, and at web pages and so on. So just as an example, if we take a look at uh, an HTTP, HTTP request to Google, then we can see that we have a MIME format here, which is text HTML, which means that, okay, this is a HTML page that we are receiving. Uh, and in Julia, there is a type, which is called MIME, uh, which you can use to represent different formats. So here I just created two, two of them. So for example, text plain and image, image PNG. So generally these MIME types have a 
main type, which is uh, the first one, and then the subtype, which is the second one. So in text plane, text is the main type and plane is the subtype. And image PNG, then image is the type and PNG is the subtype of this category. All right, so t let's take a look at uh, the functions that we saw uh, in the chain before. So display is generally the first function that uh, is being called. So it's the topmost function. And I would say that usually display is a behind the scenes function that you as a user don't really need to interact with. Uh, of course, it's some, sometimes convenient to call display of your object directly, but you probably don't have to implement anything for it. Uh, instead, display this display function is implemented by uh, displays and frontends, such as, for example, the REPL uh, and editors uh, such as Juno or VS Code and uh, iJulia, for example. <coughs> so the, here's an example from from the Julia REPL. So the REPL implements, the, or it, first it defines a, a struct, which is a REPL display. Uh, and then it implements this display function for this particular display. Um, so this display only supports text output. The next function, uh, as we saw in the chain, is called show. And this, the show function is usually the one that produces and writes output in, in the specific format. So for example, in this call, show IO, and then we uh, have a, a mime, and then an object X. So this would write uh, the image representation of, of X into the IO buffer. And you can of course implement this show function uh, for many different MIME types. Uh, there are a lot of them. So for example, there is text plane for plain text representation, text HTML for HTML output, uh, and image PNG for PNG output and so on. And it's of course possible to implement uh, many of these if, if it makes sense for an object. And there are also a couple of other functions that we haven't uh, mentioned yet, which is also related to uh, producing output. So I want to mention them here. And the first one is print. And here I'm just quoting the documentation. Print a canonical undecorated text representation. Um, the representation used by print includes minimal formatting. So yeah, uh, print is very basic and it falls back to show actually. And generally you don't have to implement this for your user types. Uh, it's enough to extend show. And then there is also a write, which is another function. Uh, but this one is not really uh, related to output even though it's uh, similar but write instead writes binary representation of objects. So there are different ways of customizing the output. Um, and you can do this by passing something called an IO context to the show, show function. And the IO const context is a dictionary-like object uh, which wraps an IO buffer. Uh, <clears throat> and then you can query this IO context for uh, for output options. So just to mention a couple of uh, things you can check for is compact uh, or limit and color and so on. Um, so as an example, if we would implement a show function uh, for a plain text output, then we can check if the output uh, supports color and then we can produce color output and if it doesn't then we just uh, produce no color output instead. So let's look at some examples. So here I want to define show uh, for for a user type and first with the, just a basic uh, representation which is called text plane. So let's first define a, a simple type, which I call Julia logo. And if we just create this, uh, an instance of this object, uh, 
we can see uh, that we have some kind of out output. So every, out, uh, every, every type in Julia has a default um, method that will be called. Uh, and in the case of the struct, it's just the name and then all of the fields. But in this case, we don't have any fields in our struct. So let's define a pretty printing for this type. So we define base.show with this text plane mime. And then we just print these three dots uh, taken from the Julia banner. So now if you look at the object X again, then we see these three dots instead of the default, uh, default output. All right, <clears throat> so let's make a, an image of this as well. So uh, we can support many different image formats. So for example, uh, PNG or uh, SVG images. And here I have an example from a notebook. So we define the same struct again and we see the default uh, output in text. And then we define a very simple show method. So I have a, a PNG file stored, which is called julia.png. So my show method here just uh, opens this file, reads all of the bytes and writes, it, uh, writes them to, to the IO. And now we can see that the output has changed from the default text one to this PNG uh, PNG image. And we can do the same with SVG output. So I also have an SVG uh, version of this image. So I just open this file and write all of the bytes to the, to the IO. And now we can see that we ins instead see the, the SVG output. So in this last notebook cell here, uh, there are three different methods defined. Uh, so we have one uh, for with default one with text output in, in cell number two. Uh, and then we have our defined PNG output in cell four and the SVG output in cell number six. So somehow uh, iJulia chooses to use one of them. So in the last case, we only see the SVG, for example, even though PNG and text output is uh, also possible. So I want to take another look at, at how this works in iJulia. So iJulia is an example of a frontend that uh, uses lots of Julia's display functionality. So first it defines its own display, just like the ripple. And this one is called inline display. Uh, and this display implementation supports multiple MIME uh, representations in contrast to the REPL one, which is text only. So you might have noticed that in a notebook, you might sometimes see text output, sometimes image output, HTML output, and maybe LaTeX output and so on. So the iJula display is a little bit more rich in that sense. And iJula actually captures multiple representations of, uh, of the same object. And then it's up to the front end to uh, to decide which of which of these representation that is uh, being displayed or shown to the user. So, if you use uh, if you show an, an, a notebook in the browser, for example, you might see image output. But if you show a notebook in uh, in like a terminal or in a REPL, then you might instead see the text output. So, if we take a look inside a notebook. So a notebook is just a JSON file. So if we take a look at the same notebook as we had uh, on the slides before, yeah, this one. So if we take a look at cell number two, so in this one we have uh, the input is just a Julia logo and then we have the default text output, which looks the same. So inside this notebook file, it's represented like this, uh, so it's a dictionary and we have a source which is the, the input to this cell and then we have outputs in plural um, but when we ha were at uh, cell number two there was only one uh, show implementation so it's just a text output uh, 
But you can see, okay, this is the text output in just the Julia logo, like this. And if we take a look at cell number uh, four instead, which was the cell where we had defined uh, also a, a PNG version of, of the show function, then we can see that there are actually two uh, two outputs stored here. Um, so we have the image, which is, which is base64 encoded, uh, and we also have the same text plane uh, output as before. But as you saw here uh, on this slide, that the output that we are actually presented with is the PNG version of, uh, of the output. So it was now the browser or the backend that decided that since we are viewing the notebook in the browser, then we display the image version because my browser is able to, to display images. So that's what, what I wanted to talk about today and thank you for listening.